I'll admit the T sound in American English is a little bit of a nuisance. It doesn't know what sound it wants to make. It doesn't know what it wants to be. The letter T in American English can make a few different sounds depending on where it occurs in a word. It can be useful to understand what the T sounds like in American English if you're seeking to better understand native English speakers from North America or if you want to improve your North American English accent. In this video, we will discuss the glottal stop, sometimes referred to as the glottal T, when it replaces a true T sound, t -t -t -t, or that fully aspirated T. It might be a little tricky at first to get this glottal stop under your belt, but with practice, you will be able to better understand North American English speakers in natural conversation. If that's something that interests you, keep watching. Now we will go over the glottal stop, particularly the glottal stop when it replaces a true T sound. Some people might call it the stop T sound, but really it's all the same sound. Listen to the way I pronounce the T, or perhaps the double T, in these words. Important, written, mountain, curtain, kitten, witness, partner, Rattler, Batman. To many non-native English speakers, it might sound like the T just disappears in these words, but that's not exactly what's happening. The T is becoming glottalized. We're replacing it with a glottal stop. So instead of pronouncing the fully aspirated T sound, t -t -t, we're doing this throaty action. We're stopping the flow of air out of our mouth, but we're stopping it right here. We're not using our mouth, we're not using our tongue. All of the action occurs here. So when you make the sound, uh, 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 you are not using your mouth, you're not using your tongue, your lips, you're using only your throat. Uh, uh, uh. You're stopping the flow of air, and that stop is called a glottal stop. That stoppage is called the glottal stop. So with my students, I like to compare it to the sound that Dougie Fresh makes in his song, The Show. Six minutes, Dougie Fresh, you're on. Uh, uh, on. Uh, uh, on. He's using his throat to block the flow of air from moving freely out of his mouth. It stops here. So this is the action that we are doing when we pronounce the T's in the words in the beginning. Mountain, curtain. So now we will go over situations in which this glottal stop might occur. We use the glottal stop or glottal T when we have a T at the end of a syllable and then the next syllable is a syllabic N. When I say syllabic N, I mean we pronounce the in for the whole syllable, for the duration of the syllable. Written, 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 mitten, 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 rotten, rotten, cotton, cotton, blatant, blatant. Manhattan, Manhattan, threaten, 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 fountain, 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 mountain, mountain, mountain. For all of those words, the T does not disappear. It became glottalized. I just stopped the flow of air out of my mouth and my throat. 
But keep in mind, if you choose to pronounce any of these words or words that follow a similar structure with the true T, it's perfectly fine, but it just sounds much more natural. And this is the way most Americans probably pronounce these words um, in natural conversation. The next situation in which you'd find a glottal stop instead of a fully aspirated T, a true T, is when a T ends a syllable and the next syllable begins with a consonant and is unstressed. So for instance, partner, partner, settler, settler, Batman, Batman, stuntman, stuntman. And this can also occur between words. So if the first word ends in a T and the next word begins with a consonant sound, then the T is pronounced as a glottal stop. Let me give you some examples. Get down, get down, get down, get down from there. That way, that way. We need to go that way. Rat poisoning, rat poisoning. It can also happen at the end of a word ending in T, even when there is no word following it. Don't give him that. Don't give him that. I did not say, if you listen closely, I did not say, don't give him that. I said, don't give him that with the glottal stop. I want to show you what I bought. I want to show you what I bought. I did not say, I want to show you what I bought. I said, I want to show you what I bought. And then the classic line, I think we're going to need a bigger boat. I think we're going to need a bigger boat. Remember, no truly aspirated T on that boat, just boat, boat with the glottal T. I know it might be difficult to hear the difference between no T and the glottal stop, but let's do a little practice. Let's take that last sentence, we're gonna need a bigger boat. We're gonna need a bigger boat. If I were to say boat, boat, with a glottal stop instead of the true T, I would say boat, boat. But if there was no T, it would be bow, bow. Boat and bow. A little different. There are exceptions to this rule. When we have a voiceless consonant sound before the T, we usually just pronounce the T fully aspirated. For instance, sect, apt, craft, lift, rest, specialist. It would be a little bit difficult to actually go from a voiceless consonant to a glottal stop. So that's why, so I'm assuming that's why we just pronounce those with the fully aspirated T. Okay, so if you enjoyed this lesson, make sure to give me a like. Um, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions on the glottal stop or the T sound in English or just pronunciation in American English in general. And until next time, English learners.